You might be wondering how all of this philosophical knowledge and ways of thinking uh, will end up being relevant to the research project that you're considering in health or social care. And of course, you might even be wondering why it's even important to know about epistemology. And that's one thing we'll study in this brief video now. The first good reason, of course, is to highlight to us the fact that the world is neither just one thing or the other. We need to stop thinking in simply black or white, that there are lots of different shades of grey in between. And epistemologies help us to study those various shades of grey. But even if there was just one simple truth, and if we did see the world as rather black or white, epistemology gets us to think how we know what we call black is black, or how do we categorise whiteness, and what are the various shades of grey, and the ways in which all of these um, interrelate with each other. Another good reason is because epistemology is one of the sure ways for us to analytically question the various forms of knowledge traditionally generated, um, especially within our health and social care worlds and research. So let me give a couple of examples here, especially about sex and gender and the impact that this has, not just on research, but on healthcare and even access to healthcare. Take, for example, the topic of erectile dysfunction. Now, I know accidents and emergency departments like calling themselves ED these days, but ED also stands for erectile dysfunction. But look back at the older words for this, impotence, which literally means without power or without manhood. And look how that can impact on a male and his feelings of self-worth. Also, when it comes to the quantity and quality of medical and biomedical studies, look how so many of them still categorise people differently um, in relation to gender, especially when it's seen from a dyadic point of view of female and male. Did you know that lots of research done on car seat belt safety, especially in accidents, is usually carried out with dummies built with the male build and male weight, and therefore lots of females experience very different or even more severe injuries because, uh, because of the ways in which the research is carried out. Look how many attributes in life may also be genderized. Consider, for example, the way that rationality and thinking is often seen within a male domain, whereas feelings and emotions are often categorised in the female domains. And finally, here's another good reason why epistemology is so good for us to study, whether we're doing qualitative or quantitative studies. We're now encouraged to be far more reflective and reflexive as practitioners and researchers. And that means we need to get into the habit of constantly asking questions such as why, how, what, what. 